Good morning, Pleasant Hill Church of God. It's so quiet in here, you can hear a pen drop, pencil drop. (laughs) I want to thank you all for making it here. There's going to be a special prize for you when you get to leave. There's going to be a bunch of white stuff on the ground. (laughs) No, it's great that you were all able to get out here. And uh, I think we're just going to move on with this and start with our song called Unstoppable God. So Stan. Yes, please. Get some energy in here. I think we don't have enough people singing. Maybe that's why. No, I don't know. Shots fired. We're going to get rock again here.
Lift your hands to the heavens. Lift your voice to the sky. Praise the God of all creation. Let his name be lifted high. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning. I really appreciate the effort y'all made to come out in the snow to be at uh, services here today and also just uh, welcome those who are joining us online this morning uh, as, and as well. And um, uh, at this, also when you go home, be careful driving home. I don't need to say that, but uh, be careful when you do that. Also, I believe we're going to cancel Sunday school today. So. Um, so we'll be having our uh, our worship service, junior church, but then uh, we'll be canceling Sunday school. And um, at this time, I'd like to read to you from the book of Psalms. And this is Psalm 1 and verses 1 through 3. And it says, How blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law he meditates night, day and night. He will be like a tree firmly planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither. And whatever he does, he prospers. Um, at this time, I'm not sure if we have, if our deacons will come forward, we'll receive our morning offering. Shall we pray together? Father in heaven, we thank you so much for this day and your blessings. And Father, uh, just that we can be in your house this day with our brothers and sisters in Christ. And Father, we ask now that you would uh, bless those who give. And uh, Lord, that uh, uh, this uh, offering would be to your glory today. And I ask these things in the name of Jesus. Amen.
there are lots of different versions of that song. And um, Teresa actually changed a lot of those lyrics, but and I love this version, that version so much better than any of the other ones. That I, and I think I like Teresa singing it better than anybody else that sings Aww. it. Johnny Cash, I'll do. I think Johnny Cash is a little bit better. <laughs> no, he, he made money singing his songs. <laughs> <laughs> That's unfortunate, isn't it? It's not who sings it better; it's who makes the most money. Right? That's it. <laughs> Well, we're going we're gonna to liven it up a little bit more because he does live. This is the name of the song, Because He Lives. If you'll stand, we're going to get it going here. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know.
to the people that are in the video audience. I am smiling because there's two little girls that are dancing <laughs> in the aisles, and it's just it's so touching and heartwarming to know that they're getting to worship Jesus this morning too. I just think it's really cool. It is in my dan in my band playing days. It was always nice when the audience would dance because that lets you know that they they're enjoying what you're playing. So that's just a thing that if you guys want to dance <laughs> in your view. Not too many people here to see you today, so have at it. <laughs> no, we're gonna get really serious here now. Reckless love.
Oh, dear Lord, thank you. Thank you for, able, for, for getting us here, Lord. Thanks for everything you pour into our lives, the blessings. They're just they're so overflowing. And Lord, though you're so good to us, even when we don't deserve it. But Father God, I pray you, you're with us always. Keep us safe and free from harm's way. Allow us to be following you and keeping you first in our life always. So we pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much to our worship team today. Really appreciate them uh, leading us in, uh, in music today and just uh, just a time of praise and worship and uh, just thinking about what the Lord has done for us. Um, at this time, let's uh, dismiss our junior church. Let them head on out. And if you would, uh, turn in your Bibles to the book of Luke and chapter 15 this morning. Luke chapter 15 and verse 1. Luke chapter 15 and verse 1. Let me know if this sounds familiar. If your head wasn't attached to your neck you would probably lose it too. If your head wasn't attached to your neck, you would probably lose it too. Well, have you ever had those words spoken to you or something like it? Or have you ever spoken those words or something like it to a forgetful teenager? It seems like when, you know, especially teenage boys at a certain age, they forget everything, you know. But uh, Or maybe a preoccupied child or maybe your spouse you know, if, if your head wasn't attached to your neck, you'd lose it too. You know, all of us uh, have lost something at one time or another, haven't we? Now, it may not have been your fault at all. Then again, the loss may have been caused by your lack of diligence, your lack of paying attention. You know, however, no matter the reason, the item was still lost. And there are times when the things that we lose have little value, you know, Maybe you mislaid a pen or a, a pencil or something. You can't find it. But no worries. Someone else has lost a pen or a pencil and you find theirs. Pick it up, right? But uh, you all, maybe you lost the phone number of, of a friend. But, you know, you could call somebody else to get their phone number, you know. Or maybe there's that one sock that seems to disappear in the dryer, right? It disappears forever. On the other hand... There can be a more serious loss. On a tubing trip down the Mad River many years ago, and some of you know this story, a young man in our youth group lost his only set of car keys. Only set of car keys. The only set he possessed in the river. I still remember him floating by me and asking, uh, Scott, have you seen my car keys? And I said, well, no, we're kind of in the middle of the river, you know. But it wasn't easy for him to get a new set of keys for his car because, that, again, that was the only set in existence that he had. But uh, some lost things can send you into a panic. You know, if you ever lost maybe a wad of cash you thought you had in your pocket, or maybe you're on a trip and you lose your credit card, oh, boy, that could be a problem, or your ID or your cell phone. You know, for some people that's a daily occurrence. <laughs> or maybe you lose a bottle of prescription medicine that you need to take right now. You can't find it. Or maybe you lost your checkbook or 
Have you ever gone into one of those gigantic park, parking lots or parking garages and you parked your car and when you come back out, you realize you didn't remember where it was, you know, and you're looking for it, you know, uh, you, forgot, you, forgot, you parked in the Mickey Mouse lot or the Donald Duck lot, you can't remember, you know. Uh, but in those cases like that, our level of panic will continue to rise until the situation is somehow resolved and you frantically try to track down the item. However, you know, loss goes beyond just mere objects. We can lose people. We can lose people. And when I say lose people, I don't mean in the sense of losing them to death, but we can lose people either to a disagreement or a, or a grudge or maybe a, a felt betrayal, and our relationship with them becomes strained or even broken, and our, our, we're, they're lost to us. There, someone you love is lost to your life, and so you can lose people too. But the lost needs to be found. You know, that's what that needs to happen, needs to be found. You need to find the lost. For life seem, it seems incomplete when something or someone is missing from it. Luke chapter 15, I'm going to read the first uh, 10 verses today. It says, Now all the tax collectors and the sinners were coming near him to listen to him. Both the Pharisees and the scribes began to grumble, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. So he told them in this parable, saying, What man among you, if he has a hundred sheep or has lost one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the open pasture and go after the one which is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he lays lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing, And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and his neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I tell you in the same way that there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who need no repentance. Or what woman, if she has ten silver coins and loses one coin, does not light a lamp and sweep the house and Search carefully until she finds it. And when she has found it, she calls together her friends and her neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin which I had lost. In the same way, I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Let's pray before we continue. Father in heaven, I thank you so much for this day that we can look into your word and consider these wondrous things that are being told to us. And may we take these things into our hearts and our minds uh, that we may be like trees planted by by abundant waters, that we may grow and and thrive and prosper. And Father, I, I just ask now that you would cleanse me, make me worthy vessel to proclaim your word. Give me the strength to preach this day, I pray. I ask these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. You know, the section of Luke focuses upon lost things. There's a lost sheep, a lost coin, and a little bit further, I didn't read that far, but there's a lost son as well. Today, we're just going to look at the lost sheep and the lost coin. You know, uh, as with some of Jesus' parables, these parables were born, born out of his ongoing conflict with the Pharisees. It's not Jesus' intent here, I think, to embarrass his opponents, the Pharisees, but perhaps to give the Pharisees, and maybe you and I, a glimpse into the heart of God. And by giving us a glimpse into the heart of God, I think Jesus hoped to soften hard hearts. As we noted last week, Jesus attracted crowds of people. In particular, in Luke chapter 15, verse 1, It reads this, as now all the tax collectors and the sinners were coming near him to listen to him. The Pharisees, though, regarded the tax collectors and the sinners as outcasts who were living in outright disobedience to the word of God. They were sinners. They were lost. And for this reason, the Pharisees avoided contact with people such as these fearing that they might too be contaminated by their sins. The Pharisees and scribes had written off these folks as unredeemable, 
unsalvageable, unsavable. They were wrecks that could not be salvaged. The Pharisees assumed that God wouldn't want people like these. For this reason, the Pharisees were critical of Jesus then in verse 2. It says, both the Pharisees and the scribes began to grumble, saying, this man receives sinners and eats with them. The Pharisees were irked that Jesus would seek out these sort of people and that Jesus would welcome them openly. We know this is, this had been a long-standing disagreement between Jesus and the Pharisees from the beginning of the Gospel of Luke. Under a similar set of circumstances, back in Luke chapter 5, verse 31, Jesus had challenged the attitude of the Pharisees, and he said this to them. He said, it is not those who are well who need a physician, but those who are sick. I've not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Now, Jesus would have agreed in part with the Pharisees in their assessment of these folks. They were sinners, no doubt. They needed to repent, true. They had been separated from God, that was true. But also Jesus was working to bring these sinners back into God's fold. And so Jesus went out seeking the lost. It's kind of ironic, while the Pharisees regarded themselves as the righteous ones, the ones closest to God, they did not really understand the heart of God in these things. So, you know, the Pharisees could need, may need a little bit of self-examination. But So Jesus wanted to give these Pharisees a glimpse into the heart of God. And how can we be able to see the heart of God? Well, Jesus gave two parables that reveal God's priorities. And these two parables are each very brief. First is about a man with a hundred sheep. And, you know, at that time, if you had a hundred sheep, a hundred head of sheep, you would have been regarded as a, as a man of some means, not super wealthy, but a man of some means. And this man was proud of his hundred sheep. And you can imagine him out in the field, out in the pasture, counting his sheep. And as he's counting his sheep, he's trying not to fall asleep. Okay. So he's counting his sheep, you know, one, two, three, da, 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 30, 31, 40, 45, da, 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 uh, 60, 67, uh, let's see, 96, 97, 98, 99. Hey, where's 100? Where's 100? One's missing. Now, the man could have concluded, hey, I've got 99 sheep. The one really doesn't matter. However, he cannot forget that one sheep. In fact, he's kind of obsessed with that one sheep, not content with just the 99. The man leaves the 99 in search of the one lost sheep. He searches high and low in valleys and on on mountains until he finds that one sheep. And rejoicing, he carries a sheep home on his shoulders. And he's so happy about this that he throws a a small party for his neighbors. For that one lost sheep is valuable, precious to him. Perhaps the Pharisees could identify with this man and in turn understand the heart of God for the lost. Think about it. Think about it. What if your pet dog goes missing? Your pet dog goes missing. Rover is lost. It was given the name Rover. Rover's lost. What do you do? Your dog's missing. Well, I imagine you first, you go walk around the neighborhood near your house. You knock on doors. You talk to the neighbors. Have you seen my dog? It's lost. Have you seen my dog? You know, you might get into your car and you might drive around a little bit wider area and on the roads and just hoping that you might catch a glimpse of your furry friend. And then maybe you call the animal shelter and you ask, you know, I I lost the dog. This is what it looks like. Do you have it there? And they they don't have it there. Maybe you make up posters. You notice people see that. You see people do this. They make up posters with a picture of their dog and a phone number. Lost dog, please call. And they go and they staple it on every telephone pole in the neighborhood, right? 
You know, you might not have the time to do this. You might not have the energy to do it, but you make the time for the lost must be found because you love that dog. You know, God is looking for the lost. He's looking for the sinner. And maybe we can catch a glimpse into the heart of God. And can you see the heart of God? You know, the the next parable, Jesus paints a picture of, that would have been familiar to the Pharisees. It would have been part of their experience or what they had experienced in their lives. A woman has ten silver coins. Each coin at that time would have been worth about a day's wage each. So there's ten of them. And, you know, it was, it was substantial, but it was not a large sum by any means. But it probably represented the entire savings of a poor family. And these coins would have represented their emergency fund for unexpected expenses when things kind of went wrong in their lives that they had something to fall back upon so they wouldn't be destitute. You know, so this woman discovers that one of the coins in their emergency fund was missing. Now, she could have said, hey, I've got nine other coins. The one coin doesn't matter. However, she's not content with that. She's obsessed with that one coin. She literally tears her house apart looking for that one lost coin. She turns on all the lights. She cleans and sweeps until the house is, until the, until it is found. And her joy is so great that she calls together her neighbors for a mini celebration. Have you glimpsed the heart of God yet? You know, many of those new televisions that they make today are different than the older models. The television in our living room, for instance, will not work at all without a remote. There's no buttons on the outside. You can't even turn the thing off without the remote, you know. And so you probably have one like that. You know, without a remote, you're kind of sunk. Have you ever lost your TV remote? Or the dog ate it? There you go. You know, what happens? You can't find it. You know, and it's sad to say, but in our day and age, we might start to panic. You tear the living room apart looking for it. And you question everybody in the family. What would you do with the remote? You know? You look under every chair and in the magazine rack. You move furniture around. You pull the cushions off the couch and find things under the cushions you wish. We wondered where they went to. But anyway, and so it becomes your obsession. Find the remote. It has to be found. The lost are God's passion. They have to be found. They are God's obsession. And perhaps, maybe what Jesus is telling us here, that the lost should also be high on our list of priorities. Do you understand now? Do you see the heart of God? And just in case we missed it, Jesus makes the point abundantly clear. Jesus concluded both parables in a similar fashion in, in verse 7 and, and verse 10 of chapter 15. Fifth, Luke 15, 7 reads this way, I tell you it in the same way, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. Luke fifteen ten, in the same way I tell you there is joy in in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Why are the lost lost? When you think about it, they're not really lost in a certain sense because God knows where they're at, right? But why are they lost? Why are they lost? Well, God created the human race 
in His image. We were created as human beings to reflect the glory of God, to reflect His righteousness and His love. And we're created, each of us are created to have a relationship with God. That's what it is to be a human being. You know, yet our sins have broken this most essential relationship. And so as we live in sin, we live in defiance of our God, in defiance of our Creator. And we end up running away from God rather than running to Him. We don't seek answers from God. We seek answers from everything else but God. We are lost. Jesus talked about the one sinner who repents and the joy that God has when that happens. To repent is to acknowledge the wrong that we've done, to to change our attitude, to change the direction of our life, to seek out God once again. And really when he talks about that one sinner who repents, we're talking about the restoration of a broken relationship. And God and the angels in heaven rejoice when just one sinner returns, when the lost is found. God is gracious to us sinners. Amen. He is gracious to you and to me. He wants you to be in fellowship with Him. And God is actively seeking you out. Now you might resist. You might find excuses. But God is looking for you. So find your way back to God. You know, if the God that we serve is seeking the lost... Shouldn't we do the same? If God's only Son welcomed the tax gatherers and sinners, shouldn't we do the same? You know, it's not our place to write anybody off as beyond salvation or write someone off as not able to be salvaged or not able to repent. And so I just encourage you to show the same grace to others as God has shown to you. For the lost things need to be found. This time, let's just ask our worship team to come on back up and lead us in a a closing song. To be honest, I love when that happens. Uh, we don't we don't talk to Pastor Scott about like what songs we do, and I, I like that. Our last song right before the message talked about the parable that we had during the message. I think that's a God thing, and that's I think somebody needed to hear that today, and that's why it was uh, repeated. So I think that's amazing. Uh, if you guys like to stand with us, uh, we're gonna do House of Miracles. <clears throat>
Shall we pray together? Father in heaven, we thank you that we can indeed indeed be in a house of miracles and in your presence, Lord. And Father, uh, we pray that you work miracles in our lives, that you open our eyes to the grace and mercy that you have for us. And Father, that you are always calling to us. 
to return to you. And Father, let us return with confidence, knowing that you love us. And Father, we just, I just pray for each person in our sanctuary here today, and also those joining us online. Let's pray a blessing be upon each one. And I ask these things in the name of our wonder Savior. Amen. Heated.